once upon a time, I had an, a, a job where I worked in an organization that had um, different large meetings and things like that where employees would be summoned and things. And some of these events, some of these meetings and things, we would ask her boss, do we, do we really have to attend this? Is, is this something that we have to go to? And she would say, well, it's an expectation. You're expected to attend. Um, it's not a requirement. She would clarify. It's not a requirement. It's not in your contract. And we understand that, but it is an expectation that you attend these things. And, and the, the clarification there was, okay, it's not legally part of your contract or whatever, but if you don't come, it's going to have consequences. It's going to make a black mark on your record and things like that. So, um, so we would always go. If, if it was an expectation, we needed to go. Even if it wasn't a legal requirement, there was sort of an ethical responsibility there. In a sense, uh, I, I was thinking about that in relation to the ethical and legal issues in public relations, specifically in the field of public relations. There are ethical obligations, there are legal obligations, and they are closely intertwined and oftentimes overlap one another, but they're not exactly the same thing. So I wanted to spend a little time here differentiating between those things and discussing just kind of in general, what are some of the ethical and legal obligations for public relations professionals. Then. So let's start with the definition of what are ethics? What do we mean when we say ethics? Well, ethics are the rules of conduct recognized in respect to a particular class of human actions or a particular group, culture, or, uh, you know, etc. right? So they are essentially the expectations. How are we expected to, to uh, behave? And what are we expected to do as decent humans living in the world and living in a community or working in an organization? What are those expectations that are placed upon us? Not necessarily what are the laws that relate to those things, but what are the expectations that other people might have of us? And more specifically for public relations, we really just say the same thing, but a code of conduct outlining the principles, values, and obligations of the craft of public relations. So how, you know, what are those expectations specifically as they relate to the field of public relations? Now that's pretty vague principles, values, obligations. So what are those? Well, there, you know, there are different definitions of that, but but the, one of the primary organizations in um, public relations, right, is the Public Relations Society of America, or the PRSA, and the PRSA does have this code of ethics that they break down into two different kind of categories. Within the code of ethics, they they discuss what they call our values, the PRSA code of ethics values, and then the PRSA code of ethics provisions of conduct. Right? Just to briefly take a look at those uh, straight from the PRSA Code of Ethics information, the values that they put forth in their Code of Ethics include advocacy, honesty, expertise, independence, loyalty, and fairness. These are all different things, and you can find more information about this on the PRSA website. You can find it right there, uh, the, the the citation there. And uh, but essentially, we are expected to advocate for uh, not only for our organization but for the public good. We're expected to be honest. We're expected to demonstrate, to have, and demonstrate then expertise. Or, you know, all of these things. So advocacy, honesty, expertise, independence, loyalty, fairness, these are the values, according to the PRSA, that a public relations professional should demonstrate and should seek to live out in their professional life. So they have these values that we put forth. Then there are also the provisions of conduct. How is it that we should behave? Not just what are the principles that we should uphold, but how is it that a, a public relations professional should behave in an ideal world? Well, the provisions of conduct include things like the free flow of information. In other words, um, kind of facilitating that free flow of information. Competition, meaning competition is healthy and, and we should value that and we should uh, thrive in that competition. Disclosure of information, both um, and you're going to discuss conflicts of interest here in a second. That's another provision. But disclosure of information, being honest, being forthright with the public and organization and everything else. Safeguarding confidences, that, that loyalty, that trust, that trustworthiness and honesty uh, and safeguarding confidences. Now, understanding that it's not exactly the same as attorney client privilege or something like that. It's not legally protected, but we do have an expectation that uh, that we safeguard the confidences of our um, of our clients and of our organizations and not just go sharing, you know, different secrets of that organization. You know, you don't work for KFC and give out their secret recipe. Right. So you don't do that for any organization.
Conflicts of interest are another one. We have an obligation to disclose those things and to work against those conflicts of interest and avoid having them be a part of our professional lives and then enhancing the profession in general. It ought to be something that we're working towards as well. So again, we had those values and now we have uh, uh, some more specific descriptions of how we ought to put those things into, uh, into play specifically through our conduct. So those re relate to ethics. Those things, according to the PRSA, are, are the code of ethics that we should adhere to. Now, how is that different, though, when we think about um, ethics versus uh, legal issues? And, and what's the difference between ethics, uh, ethical and legal then? So uh, just in brief here, in, in, a, in the broadest possible sense, legal refers to things that are explicit rules and regulations. They are codified, meaning they are written down. These are very clearly stated. They are applied to a broad collective entity, meaning a society, a group of people, and, and everybody's expected to adhere to these things. And recognition of these laws is compulsory. It's not an option for us to just kind of ignore, well, you know, that's true for, so that laws applies to some people, but not for me or not to other people. A law is a law and it applies to everyone and everyone needs to recognize that and adhere to that and abide by those laws then, right? That's the idea of a society, a legal society. So they are explicit. They are, they are laid out very clearly and that's why the law is so specific, right? And so because legal expectations need to be so, so that everybody understands them, they are applied to that broad collective entity. They apply to everyone and everyone is required to uh, follow them. Now, conversely, when we think about ethics, they're a little bit different in that people are encouraged to do these things. They are encouraged standards of conduct, but they are not necessarily a requirement, not an explicit requirement in the way that, that a law is and that legal issues are. They are relevant to an individual or a specific organization, but that could change when you go next door to a different organization or a different person, that ethical standard could be different. And the way that those are applied or the way the person chooses to enact those ethical standards could vary from person to person and from organization to organization. And recognition of these things is voluntary. So the PRSA gives us a great code of conduct and lays it out very clearly. But it's really up to the, the public relations professional whether or not they choose to adhere to those things. If they don't, then there may be consequences in terms of people may not want to trust you or work with you or whatever, but there's not going to be any jail time involved for ignoring an ethical, um, you know, standard or a guideline, right? They're, they're encouraged, but they're voluntary as opposed to laws, which are not only required and applied broadly, but they are mandatory. They are compulsory. So there's a lot of overlap a lot of times between ethics and legal. A lot of times laws are derived from ethical standards and then codified in a, in a more formal way, um, but they are different. And, and we need to understand those differences and, and how they're both applied and adhered to. So some common issues that come up in terms of ethics and, uh, you know, ethical and legal issues in public relations specifically include things like plagiarism. Uh, plagiarism not only is an ethical conundrum uh, in terms of, you know, we should not do that. Obviously, we want to give credit where credit is due. We don't take work from others. Uh, but it's also it could be a legal issue. Right? If we're plagiarizing in and we're profiting from that in some way, then it could extend into a legal area as well. Um, so that's a that's an issue that could certainly broadly be applied in an ethical sense. And it could also potentially be a legal issue as well. So um, we need to be aware of plagiarism as a common issue in ethical and legal standards in public relations. Copyright infringement is a big one. Not only, again, are we, do we have an obligation just as decent human beings to give credit where credit is due and, and not essentially steal from others by, by violating copyright laws. But there are, of course, very specific copyright laws that apply. And uh, so those could carry you know, legal um, consequences. Both it could be usually uh, most copyright infringement is going to involve some sort of fine or things like that, but could potentially involve jail time, depending on what it is. There are a lot of factors that go into it. So copyright infringement, not only an ethical issue, but also a legal issue. Even if it doesn't extend into the legal, it certainly applies to the ethical issue. Um, this is especially important to note in social media. We've gotten a little looser with this in our thinking in terms of, you know, well, it's not really copyright infringement. If it's just on my Facebook page or on my Twitter, or if I, it's social media, then it's, there's a fair use, um, provision that's involved and, and I don't have to worry about it. If it's a meme or something, that's not true that none of that is true. I mean, there are very specific copyright copyright is copyright. It doesn't matter if it's social media or traditional media or whatever, uh, copyright, you know, violating somebody's copyright, um, rights 
is illegal and, and does carry consequences beyond just the ethical standards. So we need to be very much aware that social media is no different. Conflict of interest, again, that's one of those standards that the PRSA brings up, but we need to be aware of potential legal issues involved in that as well. Certainly ethical issues if we are involved in a, in a conflict of interest um, as, as professionals, that's not something we want to get into, but could potentially have legal consequences as well if it's found that we're not disclosing or we are specifically um, concealing information that would, uh, that would be considered a conflict of interest. So uh, be aware of those things. The issue of comment, no comment. Now, typically, this is not as much a legal issue as an ethical one, but but when you, when somebody says no comment, we tend to just automatically assume, well, they're lying, they're covering something up, and things like that, even if that's not the case. So we need to be aware of the ethical kind of perspective on comment, no comment type things, um, as well as when we use the term off the record. This is one that's greatly misunderstood. People think that, if, well, if I say off the record, the journalist is not allowed to use it, period. They have a legal obligation not to use it, and it's confidential, and it can't be shared with anyone at any time for any reason. That is absolutely not true. Um, there are ethical professional standards that journalists use when somebody say somebody says something is off the record, but they're not under any legal compulsion to keep that to themselves. So we, as as public relations professionals, need to be aware that Nothing is technically truly ever off the record. We're depending on the professionalism and the general ethical standards of that individual, not of any legal right that we have to not have ourselves be quoted just because we say off the record. So there are other things that we can say, you know, in different levels of that, that would, but really involves a level of trust with that particular journalist and whether or not you find them to be ethical because they have no legal um, standing or and we have no legal standing to say, well, that was off the record and you can't use it. So those are just some of the, you know, there are lots of ethical and legal issues involved in our profession of public relations, but those are just some of the more common ones that we need to be aware of and, and, and get the discussion started for these types of things. So hopefully, as you can see, there's a lot of crossover between ethical and legal issues, although they are two separate and distinct things. It is our responsibility as public relations professionals to understand what those obligations are, whether they are ethical and voluntary and, and things like that, or they are legal and, and carry much severe, more severe consequences um, to, to violate those things. But you know, in the end, obviously, if you violate legal standards, people are going to have trouble trusting you. But the same is true for ethical standards. We need to have the highest of ethics in our profession because we rely so much on trust between uh, ourselves and the media and our publics and everything else. We need to be able to be trustworthy and we need to be seen as ethical. So th the ethical and the legal should both be very much front of mind considerations at every uh, turn in our particular work. If you have questions about the ethical or legal standards or issues in, in public relations, please feel free to reach out via email. I'd love to talk to you that way and, and uh, discuss this further. In the meantime, I hope this gives you a little inkling of an understanding of those issues and the important role that they play in the, uh, the execution of, of the uh, public relations um, professional's life. <laughs>